Hello all. Uh, this is about the latest sample paper that has been released by CBSC. I am sharing the link below for your reference. You can see that they have released set two. That is uh, nearly, they have, this time alone, I think this is the first time that CBSC has released uh, three sample papers in a span of three, four months. So we saw that the first sample paper was released in May. And then they released the second set, which had all the subjects. And now I can see here for chemistry and whatever subjects, there are some, for some subjects, they have released a second sample paper for your practice. This is a nice thing. It's a good thing that CBAC has done this. So there are so many sample papers available in the market. Like now every brand is releasing sample papers. So it is good at this juncture that CBAC has released one additional practice paper for us. So what does it mean for us? It means that now the question paper itself is actually ready. So there is a high chance that the pattern of the question paper, the questions might not repeat per se, but the pattern of the question paper, we can get a clear idea based on how they have drafted this question paper. So how to score centum in max? This time, I think it's going to be very, very easy for all of you to score centum or close to centum because there has been a considerable reduction in syllabus for you. And uh, I think... Pretty straightforward questions. Like they are going to ask these questions from these places is very, very clear. And with constant practice for the next two, three months, you can very easily score centum in mathematics. So let's just go back to a small analysis here of. So I've just taken all the chapters here and based on sample paper and 2023, what do we think could be the pattern of questions that we can expect in our board exam? So you have totally 13 chapters and they will stick on to the weightage of the syllabus. So relations and functions, if you look at it, the weightage of relations and functions is given as eight marks. So in relations and functions, there is a one mark question. It is a one mark, two mark, three mark. They have only asked a five mark for sure. It has been a five mark in 2023 board paper, in the compartment paper in the sample question paper and even in the latest sample question paper there is only a five mark question asked from relations and functions in some papers they ask a one mark also or they do not it depends similarly in inverse trigonometric function most of the sets like i'm talking about if there is a set there are so many subsets right so delhi outside delhi foreign so there are so many sets of question papers available for cpsc so we cannot expect that it will be exactly the same but it's approximately the same this eight marks weightage is definitely the same. So both these lessons together, it is going to be for eight marks for us. So inverse trigonometric functions, predominantly, they have asked only a two mark question from here. So the total adds up to eight here. There is one mark and five marks, six and two marks for inverse trigonometric functions. Though it is a very least weightage chapter, the only surprise they could do is instead of asking a one mark here, they could ask the one mark here. So other than that, this is a very pretty straightforward two chapters where you have marks. Next comes your matrices and determinants, supposedly easy two chapters for us. So the total weightage for these two chapters together is 10 marks. And in this 10 marks, they are asking you, let's say, one mark and a five mark. So the five mark is predominantly from determinants only in most of the sets. And it's usually a question where they ask you to find the inverse so a inverse and using inverse solver system or equation so that is the type of question they are expecting in the five mark call but it could either be five marks one marks the five marks could be two marks matrices three marks determinants or it could be the vice versa it could be three matrices and in one paper they had asked all four questions of matrices from here and only one determinants question so this could vary Sometimes and very, very rarely, they also ask a two mark question in matrices. Instead of these uh, four one mark questions, they ask one two mark question from matrices. In that case, they will ask you to even uh, write it as a symmetric and skew symmetric, or they can ask you to prove B dash, A, B dash, questions like that, where you only, if you, there are example questions in your book which you can rely on for this. So, anyway, the overall weightage for this is going to be 10 marks, and we have a definite five mark question from here. So next, the calculus part, it has five lessons. And in the five lessons together, the weightage is five marks. So what do we know of sure here is differential equations alone is going to carry five marks. Application of integrals alone is going to carry five marks. This is the only thing that we know for sure from this calculus part. And we also know that continuity and differentiability might carry four marks. 
So the rest of the marks is going to be divided between application of derivatives and integrals. So these two lessons are going to carry the maximum weightage in this chunk of 35 marks. So already you have 25 gone here and 21. So the remaining you have 21 marks to be divided. So the 21 marks is usually divided as 8 here, 12 here. This becomes, let's say, 5. So this is, in general, we can say this is the approximate weightage given to these chapters. Now, what are they asking in continuity and differentiability? There is one one mark question predominantly and one three mark question. So this is the maximum. And in the case study of application of derivatives, application of derivatives, usually it is, it is going to be one two mark and one four mark. Yes, but that makes it only six. But sometimes they ask both the case studies from application of derivatives. So we have to be careful here because application of derivatives Along with this application of derivatives, they also mix some questions of differentiation. Like they can also ask you if this function is differentiable. So those type of questions we can expect in here. But yes, predominantly it is a case study based on application of derivatives. And in some of the sets, both the questions are from application of derivatives itself and one question from probability. Right? So in continuity, there is a one mark and a three mark. In application of derivatives, there is one two mark question sometimes. In uh, 2023 paper, there were three two mark questions in application of derivatives itself, which was very unexpected because usually you are prepared for a bigger question from there, but they did not ask a five mark question from there. Instead, they chose to ask three two mark questions. So that comes your intervals. So in intervals, usually it is definitely one one mark question and it is usually three three mark questions. So three into three into three nine and one ten marks, but I've given a weightage as well. So wherever it is mixing, wherever it is increasing, it is getting adjusted in other places. So out of these three lessons, anyone can have a higher weightage, but the application of integrals is only a five mark for us. But now in the past two three papers, they are asking you application of integrals as one two mark and one one mark, three mark. So the five marks is instead, instead of one five mark question, they are giving that weightage to two mark and three mark and moving this integrals as the five mark. So we have a possibility of this also. We cannot rule out that possibility. So in differential equations, again, you have a five marks where you have two one mark questions. So in differential equations, you have two one mark questions usually and one three mark question. And in vector algebra, they are asking the total weightage for these two lessons is 14. That is vector and 3D together. It is 14 marks given in the syllabus. So in vector, they are trying to ask you one mark questions. Let's say three one mark questions. And 3D also, they are asking you two one mark questions. They have five marks gone here. And definitely here, there is one question on 3D geometry, a five mark question on 3D geometry. And apart from this, they are also asking you two mark question from vectors. Sometimes they're even asking you two two mark questions to balance this 14 marks. Now you could see there's only 10 marks balanced here. So even two questions from vector algebra is asked as a uh, two mark question. In LPP, it is also straightforward. You have two one mark questions and one three mark question. And in probability, there is one one mark, one three mark, and one four mark case study. So this is your, this is the overall weightage. Now let's see what are the questions they are going to ask. So it's very clear from the, this has been the norm in most of the question papers. It is not just one 2023 20, paper or one sample paper. Overall, we can understand that this is the weightage they are trying to follow and they have to follow this weightage. So in relations and functions, where do we get that question from? The one mark, one five mark question is going to be not from your textbook. So you have to do a lot of sample papers, a lot of practice papers. They're asking you prove that it is an equivalence relation. So you have to write statements properly, where you should give examples, you should give examples, where you should uh, not give examples, but use A, B, C, D, and prove. You have to do that. So that comes with practice. So you have to practice the miscellaneous questions. You have to practice the exemplar questions also, if possible, for the relations and functions. Inverse trigonometric functions straight from your textbook. You can read the textbook here. I'm putting a star here. So this is textbook. Complete your textbook once, twice. Just 
go through it once again, write all the questions and see once because they are mostly asking a question from the textbook itself, either from the example or exercise or miscellaneous. Matrices, you cannot prepare for matrices and determinants. It is not at all. Do not do the textbook because they are not going to ask you any question from the textbook. Matrices and determinants, you have a lot of formula sheets available in a lot of places. I can also share one below. Slowly, I will start sharing the notes for maths. So in that, you have all properties of matrices, like what is a transpose, symmetric, symmetric properties, transpose and inverse relationships, and determinant relationships, and all these small, small formulas are there. So those formulas, if you are thorough with, I think this matrices and determinants, five marks is going to be a cakewalk for you. Coming to the big question, we know the big question is mostly going to be only solving. So if it is on that day, you do your calculation correctly, have full concentration, you can get that five marks very easily. And so far, we know one thing in determinants, the solving questions, it has not been an ugly number so far. It has always been a whole number as the answer, one, two, three, or maximum is one by two, one by three. So there are going to be very, very nice numbers. So you cannot get an answer as 33 by 65 or something like that. So that has weird answers. And if those answers you're getting, it means that you have made a mistake somewhere. You can always go back and check that. So coming to continuity and differentiability, it's the same thing here also. You have to read your textbook only. Just go through your textbook. Do all the questions here. And one three mark is from the textbook. So they are going to ask you a three mark question only from your textbook. So if you do your textbook properly, you can do. Do not read your textbook for application of derivatives. There is a 90% chance that our big question will not be from application of derivatives. So if you can't have the five mark question, 6.5 exercise, you have so many problems, word problems. Those cannot be asked as directly a five mark for you to buy heart and write. So it will not be there. So do not practice that. You have to practice it from case studies. There is, a, I think, a score more book on case study questions, 750 plus case study questions. Are they? If I get a soft copy of that also, I will also upload it for you. So in application of derivatives, it is a case study. And the case study is, yes, it is based on those problems where you have the volume, surface area questions, and all different models of questions. So you cannot do the textbook here. You have to practice from other sources for application of derivatives. Coming to integrals, textbook. Somewhere there is this question, there is a model of this in textbook. So integrals, are, I think more than 130 problems in your textbook itself to do, plus examples, plus miscellaneous, plus etc. You have to do all of them. And I would write, right away start doing it because it has 12 marks and it is a maximum weightage for any single chapter in your, all your chapters. So if you do integrals well, if you can just find out the model of the integrals, it is going to be very, very easy to score that close to set of marks here. Application of integrals, you have only five models totally. You have parabola, circle, ellipse, and then you have a model with modulus. And then finally, you have area of a triangle, which is actually, this is another thing which I wanted to tell you. In the new textbook, you can see that in the website NCRT, uh, they have removed a lot of questions from application of integrals, the new book and the old book. But in compartment paper also, 2023 compartment paper, which happened in September, they have asked that question. So it is actually very vague whether that is there or not there because uh, in syllabus it says curves or area between curves is not given, but area under lines should be there. So whether this question is there or not is a is definitely debatable. So it is always better that you learn that one question because even though if it is in the choice, if you do not understand the first model question, you can always do the second model area question. So that is also, I will attach that also those pages from the old book also will attach as, the, as an attachment here. And in application of integrals, it's very straightforward. Even if it's a five mark question or a two and a three mark question, you have only five models of question to practice from. And there is a modulus. Modulus model is most mostly they will ask you the modulus model as a three mark question or a five mark question. Coming to differential equations, you have two one mark questions. Definitely one question is from degree order. And the other question is the integrating factor. And once they ask those two questions there, here it is going to be definitely variable separable method or the homogeneous differential equations method as a three mark question. Very, very straightforward. Here also, I will see one, two only textbook. Application of integrals also, you can do textbook, but it will not be a textbook question, but it will be based on textbook. They will not ask you the same question maybe, but they will ask you based on the textbook, they will ask you questions on this. Now again, vector and 3D. So vector 3D, we cannot say we have to do the textbook. You have to do from a predefined predefined notes. You know, you have this already. We will have this already. I think any school will be doing it for you. 
because in 3d geometry in your ncrt there are not much questions there are very few questions you have a shortest distance question is there that is an important model there are only five models again in 3d geometry you have intersecting lines question and then you have the foot of the perpendicular find the foot of the perpendicular find the equation of the perpendicular and uh, find the image of the point uh, questions like that and then you have equation of a line which is perpendicular to two lines a model like this so you have a equation of a line which is perpendicular to two lines you have to find the equation of this line so there are five six models in 3d geometry which are there in your miscellaneous and exemplar only but they are asking questions from there so we have to also prepare it is not going to be a very easy thing to do but you will always know if you practice from 10 questions you can definitely do this one five mark very easily in 3d geometry but no in crt you might not have to study for 3d geometry because in crt there are very very easy questions only where in cartesian form vector form that is that they have limited themselves to the direction cosines and uh, that's that's what is there in the 3d geometry in crt which they might not test you on but for the one mark questions yes you have to go through all these formulas perpendicular condition for perpendicularity parallel parallel collinearity all these you have to go through Coming to LPP again, the two marks is going to be graph based. They can give you a graph and ask you to find out the corner points, find the feasible region, what not, right? So that is there. And then you have only one question. Usually it is going to be a three mark question. So maybe three lines and they will ask you to do the graph for it. So that is going to be one three mark question. LPP, very easy five marks to get. And finally, you have probability. In probability, the one mark is in a simple concept based on P of A, P of B, not P, P dash, P of A given B. Some concept like that as the one mark question. And you have a three mark question. And here again, there is one big blunder that I think PBSE has done here. They have removed the entire exercise 13.4. 13.4 is not there in the new book. 13.4 deals with probability distribution. And after probability distribution, you have mean variance there, but variance is not there for us. First year, they deleted probability distribution, that is the COVID batch. And after that, they re-equaled probability distribution. And they said only probability distribution. Last year, they said probability distribution without mean. But this year, in the syllabus, it clearly says you have probability distribution and mean. But this entire exercise is missing from your new textbook. So here also, I have added the old textbook pages of those. You can find it maybe from you. You might have the old textbook itself. I'm not sure those are preparing for GE. You might have your old textbook. But this 13.4 becomes important because they have asked this three mark question. This three mark question is def definitely from 13.4. For the past, all these five papers I'm talking about, they have asked this question from 13.4. But yes, they've given you a choice. They have given you a choice with conditional probability. Believe me, it is easier to do the probability distribution question rather than the conditional probability question because if you do not understand that question, it is going to be difficult to get the three marks, whereas probability distribution is easier to understand and do. This case study, again, is going to be based on your Bayes theorem, not entirely Bayes theorem, maybe. The question itself, if we interpret and write it correctly, the first two marks you can easily get, and maybe the only third question will involve Bayes theorem for you. But anyway, this is going to be based on Bayes theorem. So probability, do not study the textbook. You have to go for additional questions only. So additional questions, you have to practice for application of derivatives and probability because they are based on case studies. So case studies, you have to keep on practicing from different other sources possible. There will be so many question papers available from Kendri Vidyalaya schools and so many people will start making sample papers. And uh, it is better, do not buy any books. I, I am I'm sure in internet or everything is available for you for free. You can just download them and start practicing for your exams. So I wish you all the best.